Today we are going to speak about a very important topic, which is the effect of maintenance on the environment. Why it is very important? Because nowadays everyone's speaking about the envir environment. There's uh, in the beginning of November a conference starting from the end of October till maybe the 11th or something like that. In November it's speaking about the effect uh, of every country on the global environment and how this global environment is changing and what restrictions should be taken to prevent us from damaging the planet as the uh, parties proclaim that for uh, the activities of the uh, new era or the activities of the industrial evolution or the acti current activities of the luxury life the humans are living are badly affecting the climate of the earth and to sustain the earth living conditions we need to may have more restricted operations on the uh, industrial activities or in the general acti human activities that produce uh, emissions that affects the global environment so what is the contribution of the maintenance in the environment that's a very important topic we had discussed the importance of maintenance for uh, added value and for health and safety which is a supreme priority but how the, uh, the the maintenance affects the environment to understand this concept we need first to understand what is the environment so the definition literal definition of the environment as from oxford dictionary it is the surrounding conditions in which person animal or plant lives or operates or works so whatever is surrounding you as a person whatever is surrounding the animals the plants it's your environment so in the workplace there are humans or persons and machines persons and machines are surrounded by the working environment the working environment inside the workplace if it propagates to outside the workplace in the form of emissions and waste it affects the surrounding environment or the, of the livings around this plant it affects the uh, persons the animals and the plants so we will shall focus today to understand what are the emissions and the wastes that are harmful to the global environment and how what is the effect of maintenance and good maintenance practices to reduce these emissions or at least to maintain because as we said the target of maintenance is to maintain so if uh, the, where we were working managed to reach uh, a, car, a certain carbon emissions a certain greenhouse gases emissions control controls and they had already licenses up and approves and the discharge of waste and so on is already licensed and approved and so on the task of the maintenance is to maintain the working place within these standards okay so you need to maintain the working your working place within the standards that the working place had agreed upon so but again what as a maintenance i will do what is required so as a maintenance uh, practitioner as a maintenance manager i do what is required for me i maintain my equipment so why do i need to understand the effect or the impact on the environment when we are working we have two paths for our career the first pass is that we focus on what we are doing in, with our hands, our hands-on experience, and we uh, update it, we increase it, we uh, increase our experience. We are the most experienced person in this doing this job. This way, you will be the best one doing this job. So you will be able to maintain your job. But if you are able to understand why you are doing this job, its effect on the business, its effect on the company the interactions between what you are doing and the other silos of the uh, organization or the other parts of the organization or the organization it depends how you are arranging the organization then you are opening your way to upgrade in your career so it's more a career than a job now so it's your career and you can upgrade and move forward in your career when you have a broader vision of everything that is happening around you that's more than being the best one so being the best one doing this job you will be the most experienced one doing it and you will maintain your job doing it that's a perfect career path if you choose to take it. the other career path that you understand what is around your business how you understand your business be good at it and, and at the same time you understand your effect on the global working conditions so that's part of our importance for understanding the environment because you will find many of the, most of the companies now speaking about the environment and the environmental impact and many countries will take more restricted regulations on the environment so the next we are going to speak about what affects the global measures mainly because what affects the global measures of the uh, environment will be uh, converted during this COP uh, to 
26, which is held in 2021, will take them to take more restricted supervision, more restricted controls, and so on. So let's understand what they look at. They look at mainly at the emissions. So what are the emissions? The emissions are the substance, as literal definition per Merriam-Webster, it is the substance discharged into the air, either by smokestack or from the automobile engine or from whatever engine is running. Okay, so now we need to understand what emissions are important. There are three categories of emissions that are important. One of them, what they call the ozone depletion substances. And the, the second one uh, will be the uh, greenhouse uh, gases and the third one will be the pollutants that affects the human health okay and they have interreactions between them but they are mainly categorized in these categories so they are not all in one pot they are divided into categories and dealing with them differs so the ozone depletion substance so the, early, the ozone in itself as uh, explained is protecting the earth from the ultraviolet radiations or limiting the ultraviolet radiations reaching the earth to a healthy condition. If you uh, damage this ozone layer, so the ultraviolet radiations reaching the Earth will reach to unfavorable uh, conditions that may affect the human or the life in its different forms on Earth. The main gases that is affecting the uh, ozone is the chlorofluorocarbons, which is mainly from the refrigerations and the air conditions, the halons, which is in the fire extinction, the carbon data chloride and missile, which is coming from the degreasing agents like the solvents and the cleaners, and the missile bromide, which is used in formation of soil and structures and uh, the goods to be transported. You can think about it like if you are uh, exporting and importing some uh, vegetables or fruits and so on, and it's traveling long distances, uh, you it is subject to fumig uh, fumigation, uh, and this fumigation removes any parasites or any uh, bacteria or any uh, unfavorable con uh, met uh, living forms on the fruits and uh, vegetables or any other uh, goods, it, uh, goods that is transported to other imported and uh, transport. The other thing is the greenhouse gases. The, uh, the greenhouse gases, that's uh, the gases which, when emitted to uh, the air, will increase the temperature of the earth. Okay, and they will increase, of course, the pollution. And this will cause an extreme weather conditions that will uh, disrupt the food supply and uh, the, the wildlife. Okay, so from them, uh, the, the previous gases we had mentioned already affects the greenhouse uh, effect or that uh, in warming or the increasing in the temperature as proclaimed. The main part of them is the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide already affects as part uh, in the previous session, but it's also mainly coming in the greenhouse gases that's increasing the temperature. And that's very important if you hear about zero carbon and the carbon uh, budget and, and, and whatever. So that's a main contributor here in the potent greenhouse gases. You can find it in uh, the CO2. CO2, 70% of the CO2 is coming from the emission of energy. Any form of energy you are generating, like the electricity, heating from the industries, from the transportations, from the fuel compunctions, and so on. All this is coming, 70% of the CO2 uh, emissions, it's coming from these sources, which is in every working condition. The other one is the methane, and 15% uh, of the methane is coming mainly from the industries, uh, like fuel and gas and uh, reuse or sorry, uh, dealing with the wastes okay, or uh, treating the wastes coming from uh, which is having the base of oil and gas so 15% I can uh, control it from the wastes of oil and gas okay the remaining are natural sources so affecting the, the natural sources is a little bit tricky which is not subject of our uh, speech now uh, remaining is the nitrous oxide which is coming from agriculture uh, sources only small percentage which is 20 percent is coming from uh, the energy sources like the transportation the air the other air pollutants which affects mainly the human health and it's added already to the three categories of the gases are the particles or the particulates as they said which is for coming uh, to the air from the combustion it affects mainly the lungs and the breathing and the sulfur dioxide which is coming from burning the uh, not high quality fuels which is including a, low, uh, a high percentage of sulfur uh, that causes the acid rain and impacts on, on the human health short of breath and so on and the carbon monoxide if we see carbon so that's adding to the carbon budget and the zero carbon so it's also in, in the focus of the zero carbon emission but it mainly affects the human health because if you are subject to uh, 
high amounts of carbon monoxide, your intake of oxygen will decrease. And because the uh, hemoglobin, uh, when comes in contact or carries carbon monoxide, it's not able to carry oxygen. And if it reaches up to 40% of the hemoglobin, it will cause death. 2.5 will percent of the hemoglobin combined with carbon monoxide will cause serious health issues. So now we have a big background and you'll find the resources of these values and these resources at the end you'll find it and you'll find it also in this chat you'll find the link in the content box with other trainings on the maintenance so the other side so if my workplace is controlling the emission of all these gases i need to maintain the utilities and the facilities that is controlling the emission of these gases i need to maintain it in the perfect condition so i'm not my working place is not subject to fines and it's not subject to uh, limitation on the working conditions and now we go to the waste so the waste simply the definition of waste uh, is as definition defined by the united states environment protection agency so waste generation in most cases is inefficient use of material so let we think it if, we, if you think about your uh, oil and grease for example so you are using uh, your uh, greasing uh, for a certain period of time if you in you ch are changing the grease more frequent than needed or due to unfavorable working condition of the grease you need to change it more frequent so you are generating more uh, waste of the grease when you replace it and this grease waste is affecting all the gases we had or all the emissions when it is uh, we try to take it to to dismiss it it's you it's affecting all the gases and emissions and we had said about and it's affecting the soil also you need to make it efficient not only the the, the oils and greases and the cooling waters and chemicals and so on even the spare parts and if you have some metal spare parts these metal spare parts need to be recycled and this recycling of the uh, of the parts and itself is consuming energy and energy is adding to the carbon gases and so on so you need when you for example suppose at least that you are purchasing uh, 100 meters of any uh, fabric that you are going to use it in your workplace so you need to if you manage to use 99.999 percent of this 100 meters of the fabric that you had purchased and you put any you dump anything to the outside or to the to the waste then you are most efficient but this doesn't usually happen part is doing to how we operate it and another part is doing to how we maintain it how we install it so if it's not installed properly if it is not maintained properly the equipment we will be frequently replacing these fabrics we will be replacing these oils and greases and and so on so the pollutants they are afraid from that if you, uh, the workplace dumps the pollutants in the water if it dumps in the soil and even the recycling and uh, reusing of this uh, yeah, refabrication of this is consuming energy and and so on so minimizing the waste first will add more profit gain to the company or to the workplace which will be coming at the end to you or as working in the maintenance and setting up the working place you agree to some waste uh, quantities and so on and in many countries they have a revision on you or they have uh, they come to check with auditors how many wastes you generate and how you treat these wastes and if you treat them um, in the proper way or in the official way or in the legal way and treating them in the official and the legal way is usually a cost of money so that if the wastes increased you would be paying more money for the reuse and recycling and storage and treatment and disposal of the industrial waste so you need to minimize them to the minimum acceptable by the standards of the plants and even less than that so uh, as we said it's yeah, failure in the production lines will produce waste uh, out of spec products is also waste leakage of any kind water lubricant hydraulic oil chemicals all these are waste uh, even vibration in, uh, increase is uh, is a waste is is some sort it, it damages the lubricants it damages, it damages the, the parts and so on so it's increasing to uh, the equipment and even the noise or the, the audio noise we are hearing from the vibrations and and so on maybe it's not a kind of waste but it's pollutant to the people working there okay corrosions and and many other uh, things so we need as a man yeah, in the maintenance management field if you are a maintenance supervisor or maintenance manager you need to, in, to ensure that you have kpis that measures your effect on the proper operation of the plant on the waste the failures the the scrapped material due to the failure the uh, wasted material the cost you can add to the cost we are going to discuss the cost in details 
so we, you, can, you, you need to add the part of the material lost to your cost even if it's not treated like this by the company but calculate it for yourself because this would be an approach to you if you decrease the failures and the increase the time between failure or the increase even the time between maintenance you will be decreasing the loss the losses decreasing the parts and decreasing the parts you will decrease the cost of recycling and uh, disposal of these parts okay so today uh, success is tomorrow's mediocrity and please we need to be hand in hand with our workplaces and with the globe to maintain the environment the earth is usually usually looking for us everyone has a role in maintaining the earth environmental conditions okay that's a lot of references uh, from where i get the the information uh, above you will find them when you are going to read uh, the if you are like to prefer to read this uh, discussion you will find the link in the description with other trainings and other resources see you in coming videos